What about Paul O'Sullivan, the story, was something that you wanted to do? Well, various threads of the story had been written about um, at the time of Celebi's court appearance and also, of course, what happened in the middle of Paul's and, and various other people's investigations was that Brett Kebble had got um, a shot. So various other books had been written about um, issues surrounding the main narrative and Paul's narrative was the one narrative that was really missing and it was that that um, I was intrigued and interested by. Paul, so you're going to explain to me how this came about, but what, what was it about the way Marianne approached you? They said, okay, well, I'm going to put my story um, to paper. Well, um, I was contacted by um, Jakarta Publishers and they, they, they heard that I was going to Cape Town and they said, would you, somebody wants to take you to suffer. So um, we met Marianne Tam um, my wife and one of my daughters and myself and yeah. she took us to supper and I didn't realize it but that was the first of many interviews and she ate very slowly <laughs> so she got her money's <laughs> worth because she was paying for the meal <laughs> um, Marianne um, you heard Paul say that you were eating very very slowly but I mean I can only imagine to grab a man uh, that is this busy, that I've got so many things uh, I'm going, and then he's got this unrelentless pursuit for justice, must have been not only a very detailed approach, because he's a very busy man. I assume that you're based in Cape Town, you had to come up to Joburg. Yes, but um, Paul had already done, I think, about nine hours worth of interviews with um, various other people because, the, as you see on the book's cover, there's a film kind of in the pipeline. Yeah. And I had, I had been a crime reporter when I started working for the Cape Times many years ago, for eight years. And so I have a kind of institutional memory about crime and criminality in South Africa and had been following the case. And uh, so part of the story was already, I had already internalized it from, from the outside in. Um, but I think Paul was also ready to tell his story, so he made himself available. But I also got um, the, what was known as the classic Paul O'Sullivan dossier, which was Paul's collection of affidavits and emails and various other documents that he had gathered over a period of eight years in his pursuit of, of first of all, justice, um, to clear his own name. And, and it was in the course of that that he discovered kind of that there were these concentric circles of interest that were intersecting, crim criminal circles of interest. So I spent time with Paul in Johannesburg, which was uh, very interesting, uh, as seeing as he was number one on a hit list at the time. Um, yeah. But I also spent some time, sort of a lot of time, going through thousands of, of, uh, of documents and thousands of pages of court records to try and reconstruct f in some fashion this very grand and big sprawling narrative and where Paul fitted into it. Well, one of the things that Marion does very well is she has the really the ability to, for those people that don't, have never heard your story but they've heard the name, they've seen the interactions in the news and that kind of, she, she has a great way of humanizing you. And I don't know if that's an, an apt way to describe it, but you're still a very closed book. Where does this, this drive and this hunger to see justice uh, um, take its, its course, where does that come from? I don't know. Um, I suppose, you know, I was sort of brought up in a typical Irish Catholic family where there was a lot of children, and in those days there was a lot of poverty. So, um, you know, uh, things would, would quite often be quite tense, and I had a very mm. strict disciplinary father. Mm. And quite often, you know, you'd get blamed for things you hadn't done. <laughs> and I just always felt that it was important to set the record straight each and every time. Yeah. And I, I learned to persevere until I'd proven my side of the story. And I think that ultimately led to um, a passion for seeing the truth being told. Mm. Y you know, one of the things that I want to ask, uh, Marianne, how just how difficult an interviewer you are, but how did you find this process? Because in many ways, this is your story. Uh, to be frank with you, I... It's it's not I'm not in my comfort zone, um, but after the first day or two of Marion sitting on my shoulder, you kind of forget that she's there, and I suppose that's when the real you starts shining through. Um, but I, you know, I live as those that know me think there's two of me, but there's only one of me, and I have mm. to live quite fast in order to fit my day's schedule in. Mm. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's really not for me to be in a a goldfish bowl. I pref I'm quite a private man. 
and I prefer to keep my private life private. Mariam, very last question to you. We've uh, run out of time, but uh, this is a compelling read, and we, we've seen the other stories, um, the other books, and the other aspects. Why is this such a perfect fit to Killing Kebel and all the other things? Because there's a missing piece here, and that is um, an, an ordinary man who has, you know, a forensic consultant. And it's a great story, and I liked it because I understand Paul's thing about looking for justice. So he gets fired from his job uh, or dismissed from his job at AXA and decides, no, 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 I wasn't wrong, and uh, I'm going to prove myself. And it's this really compelling story just from a, from, a, from a narrative point of view of a man who sets out to prove that he was right. Um, and I think that is a, and, and, and he is right at the end. So the police chief gets jailed for 15 years, and that, that's a great story as far as I'm concerned. He's going to make a great movie as well. Guys, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, from our Cape Town studios, uh, author thank and you. journalist Marion Tam, who put the book together to catch a cop. And of course, the subject of her book, Paul O'Sullivan, uh, I hope that's not dis environmental to say that, but the subject of a book, Paul O'Sullivan, in our Johannesburg studio. The book is called To Catch a Cop, the Paul O'Sullivan story. It's available in all good bookstores. We urge you to go and get a copy. It's a fantastic read. Let's go to an average.